Hello and welcome to Chosen Few, the one and only place for you. <laughs> I'm Ian Santine, the head software engineer at Chosen Few Software. Also happen to be the founder, um, brand manager, pretty much everything. I, I do everything here, okay? I have a few friends and family members also helping me out, but for the most part, it's all me. I'm like the guy. <laughs> Today, I'm really excited because we are talking about SAVE, um, a project that last saw the light of day online about two years ago, which is <laughs> um, not that great. Um, it's not a great video. I went for this whole like cringy meeting room approach to the whole thing. Bad eyelines, no. But yeah, the last time you saw SAVE, it was a primitive but promising VHS tape emulator. Um, I'll show some footage of what that looked like back then. Essentially, SAVE at this point in time was the prototype of the prototype, if that makes any sense, of what I'm going to unveil today. And it essentially proved that accurate emulation of this effect and many other analog video formats was possible through simulation of traditional analog techniques. So that was save version 0.0.1, I would say. And now we're getting closer to something more like save version 0.2. What I'm going to show you is essentially the next generation of save. Since I last posted about it, I have rewritten the project from the ground up in Microsoft.NET C Sharp with a primary focus on optimal processing and eliminating bottlenecks. But to get to this point, this new generation of save, I actually had to get through a lot of technical difficulties which I will outline right now. Starting with what I like to call one-dimensional hell. Essentially, the complex signal calculations that SAVE has to perform can only really be done sample by sample, meaning one by one. You have to process everything one bit at a time. There's no other way of doing it correctly and accurately. So because of this, you're limited to the capacity of a single core on a, on a traditional computer. However, I did try to escape this whenever possible to still fulfill that goal of optimal processing by offloading things that could be done concurrently, meaning several things at a time. I moved all of that over to the GPU side of things. So the parts that can be lightning fast, are. Another technical issue that I encountered while making building this new generation of save is spaghetti code hell. The code base was extremely disorganized, very verbose, and was not very expressive or reflective of the concepts that, that I was taking advantage of basically to build this project. This boils down to the fact that C Sharp is not designed to efficiently represent the specific kinds of computations that SAVE needs to perform. So the solution was, of course, to build my own language to do exactly that. This new language, of course, is called ASSM, which stands for Analog Signal State Machines. This new language is essentially a mini language built on top of C-sharp that allows me to represent the different repetitive calculations that I have to do in save very commonly. For example, frequency modulation, frequency demodulation, integration, low pass filters, all of that. Essentially, those kinds of calculations I can represent with just a few lines of code rather than like 50 or 60 lines of C-sharp code. And these few lines of code, these few dozen lines of code, essentially get compiled, in a sense, more like translated to C-sharp itself, which allows for better integration with the rest of the code base. And I realized that this separation of data transformation logic from the rest of the batch processing logic actually made things a lot cleaner. And uh, yeah, 
that was a pretty great solution to a pretty big problem with the code base. The last big problem though that I had to tackle with this system was an issue of precision. The built-in number types in C Sharp are usually pretty good for most use cases, but in my case, sometimes they just can't cut it. Unfortunately, single and double precision numbers, the traditional floating point types used in C Sharp and many other languages, are decent in most cases, but they have this problem where the bigger they get, the less precise they become. This was a huge problem for the save project because the signals we're modeling are in the domain of like between 30 seconds and several hours. Say you wanted to emulate a six hour VHS tape. You simply can't do that at the precise level you need with the single and double precision types. So in true Obi-Wan fashion, I ask myself, do you have a plan B? And of course I do. To ensure that saves users have the freedom to choose exactly how accurate the calculations get, I implemented a quadruple precision type, which essentially solves all of the specific problems I was having with the built-in types. With this new quadruple precision type, there is zero compromise on precision throughout the entire numerically valid range. And it's built based off of the built-in integer types in C Sharp to allow for maximum as possible performance, meaning there are still probably better ways to do it, but I implemented it as thoughtfully and carefully as I could to ensure that performance wouldn't be the biggest issue with getting accurate calculations out of save. And of course, for those who just want pretty good results, they of course can choose to opt in to the single or double precision formats to speed up their calculations up to two to three times. And the reason why users are able to have this freedom of choice is because I'm writing the code base to be as flexible as possible, even at the most technical levels. And of course, with all of these big changes and big challenges, I also found myself setting bigger goals for the project overall. Why leave save at emulation? When with the help of relatively inexpensive customized hardware, Save could bring your images, your digital images, to analog television sets and other analog devices at a fraction of the cost of competitive DAC hardware. And that's not even mentioning the flexibility that comes with software-based solutions. Portability, configurability, updates without having to go to a store and buy a whole new hunk of metal and bring it home. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Save has the potential to become literally the first software-based video DAC in the world that is competitive in both quality and price to traditional analog hardware. Now this is all fine and dandy, right? But I'm sure you all have questions about the project. Probably some of the most common ones are, where is Save now? Well, see for yourself. What you're about to see is a 30 second long digital audio sample completely generated by Save that simulates the effects of someone turning a radio tuning dial on an FM receiver in their car or stereo. Throughout the simulation, you'll notice that while it sounds very noisy, you can catch short glimpses of each of the radio channels as the simulation progresses. I've worked very hard to get everything up to this point, and I hope you enjoy. So what are Save's next steps? Well, the idea is to keep chipping away at it, to carefully and thoughtfully implement core features and technicalities, and more broadly begin thinking about Save's user experience as a whole. As far as when Save will release, there isn't really any promises or timelines that I can give right now. 
it takes a lot of time to research all of these things very thoroughly to make sure that I'm giving the best quality simulations possible. And of course, extra time and care will be taken to implement core features and technicalities to ensure a sturdy code base from the ground up and a great user experience overall. And of course, hardware is now an added challenge. That takes a lot of time and effort to develop, not only in the thought process of designing it, but also in building it. And beyond that, I'm an online student studying at Davenport University, and I am usually pretty busy with the schoolwork, friends, etc. So I can't dedicate all of my time as much as I would like to to save and all of my other chosen few software projects. Speaking of which, there are a lot of new projects on the horizons for chosen few software as well. And I like to dedicate equal amounts of time and attention to essentially each of my children, right? Will save be free? Will it be open source? Definitely not. And maybe not. So if I want to make a living, I can't really let my magnum opus like ace in the whole idea loose for everyone to play around with for free. As much as I know all of you would love that, and as much happiness it would bring me to do such a thing, I need to be able to start making a living if I want to be serious about being self-employed. However, with that said, save is part of Chosen Few Software's long-term business strategy. A save version 2 is entirely within the realm of possibility, meaning that I might open source version 1 if such a thing were to happen. And as far as upfront cost, since it won't be free, I can't really give any solid numbers. My ballpark guess at the moment is between $75 and $150. The goal is to be as price competitive as possible with digital to analog hardware competitors. And for all of those technical folk out there who would like to see the source code to a project like this, it's very likely that the Save software suite will come with a personal license to save source code. And also on a related note, because Save is written in C Sharp, decompilation is a big concern. So distributing the source code up front with a strong license allows me to protect my work as well as discourage reverse engineering almost entirely. But yeah, that's pretty much everything I wanted to talk about with the save project as of late. I hope to make these kinds of update videos much more frequently, so do stay tuned, subscribe to this channel, also subscribe to my personal channel, yodadoo2003, and yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.